The inhospitable plains of Mordor, the volcanic world of Mustafar. What do these hellish yet fictional worlds have in common? They are a snow-covered ski resort compared to our real next-door neighbor, the planet Venus. It's hard to imagine a place more intense. Venus is covered with volcanoes. It rains sulfuric acid. It's always dim. Metal melts like butter in the infernal heat. It spins backwards. And if you ever landed on Venus, you would be crushed as though you were at the bottom of the ocean. Welcome to Venus, Earth's angsty twin. If you notice an extremely bright white star in the sky that doesn't twinkle, you're probably seeing Venus. It tends to be the brightest point of light that you can see after the moon. Nearly every civilization on Earth has looked up at Venus and imagined what beauty might be hidden on this world. The Romans even named Venus after their own god of love and beauty. It's such a pretty light in the sky, it must be a paradise. Yeah, not so much. Venus is the second planet from the sun, and it tends to be the closest planetary neighbor to Earth. Venus's year, the time that it takes to orbit the sun one time, is shorter than our year, about 225 Earth days. Do you ever have the kind of day that feels like it just won't end? The kind of day that feels like it's as long as a year? Well, on Venus, that is literally the case every single day. On Venus, one day is 243 Earth days long. This means that a day on Venus is technically longer than its year. It's also unique in that Venus spins backwards from the Earth, so the sun rises in the west and sets in the east. Venus is a rocky planet, just like Earth. It's about the same size and mass as our planet, and it has nearly the same force of gravity. As planetary scientists have studied rocks on Venus, they've even found evidence that it might have been rather Earth-like at some point in the distant past. It might have had oceans, flowing rivers, rain, snow, and ice caps. If that were true, the question becomes, what happened to you, Venus? Probably volcanoes, releasing a ton of carbon into the atmosphere. And since greenhouse gases are rising on Earth right now, studying what happened to Venus seems like a good idea. The atmosphere of Venus is made of mostly carbon dioxide, the same gas that you exhale, but at a level that is extremely toxic to humans. The air is so thick at the surface that the brightest day on Venus would look as dim as twilight does on Earth. You would just see a thick, dark haze. But what's even worse is the air pressure. The surface pressure on Venus is a staggering 92 times greater than that on Earth. Standing on Venus would feel like you were a kilometer deep underwater on Earth. You would be instantly crushed from all directions. That atmosphere is also responsible for making Venus the number one hottest planet in our solar system. Consider that if you bake cookies in an oven, you should have it at about 175 degrees Celsius. The temperature on Venus is almost three times hotter, 460 degrees Celsius those cookies would be burned to charcoal instantly. To properly bake cookies on Venus, you would need something more like a refrigerator than an oven. It's that thick atmosphere on Venus that traps heat from the sun, creating a runaway greenhouse effect that has made the planet incredibly hot. When sunlight enters Venus's atmosphere, some of that light is absorbed by the planet's surface, and some of it is reflected back into space. Greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane and water vapor, they trap some of that outgoing light and prevent it from escaping into space. That increasing heat must have melted the frozen water or the frozen carbon dioxide, which leads to more gases and more greenhouse heating, melting more ice, trapping more heat, and on and on it goes. It's a vicious cycle until it's as hot as it can possibly get. This is known as a runaway greenhouse effect, and it's what has made Venus so hot today. But it gets worse. You see those beautiful white clouds? They are actually made of vaporized sulfuric acid, a corrosive chemical that would immediately burn your skin on contact. The clouds could dissolve wood or clothing, marble, even certain metals. As these clouds become more dense, they actually rain sulfuric acid. Due to the extremely high temperatures, the rain never reaches the ground. As the sulfuric acid droplets fall through the atmosphere, they evaporate and become part of the surrounding gas. This creates just a continuous cycle of sulfuric acid rain forming and evaporating from the Venusian atmosphere. You know something else that Venus has a lot of? Volcanoes. There are thousands of them covering the surface. It has so many volcanoes on the surface that it's effectively turned itself inside out. What's more, on Earth we typically see volcanoes in predictable locations based on plate tectonics. But on Venus, volcanic features are distributed globally in a pattern that seems random. In March of 2023, scientists revealed that one of the volcanoes that they have been watching since 1991 has changed in shape and grown over the last three decades, suggesting that at least some volcanoes on Venus are still active and doing their volcano things. 
Most of them appear as large sloping domes that have been nicknamed pancakes. And looking at them, you kind of see why. In the past, these volcanoes have created rivers of lava that may have flowed for hundreds of kilometers. As a result of all that volcanic activity, Venus is covered in smooth, relatively flat plains. Being fairly close to our own planet, Venus was the first planet that was ever visited by an unmanned spacecraft. The first successful mission was by NASA in 1962 called Mariner 2. Since then, the United States, the Soviet Union, and the European Union have sent many spacecraft to explore Venus. But while NASA has explored Venus from space, in the 1970s, the Soviet Union actually landed several spacecraft on the surface of Venus and transmitted photos from the surface. This is the Venera program, and has taught us a lot about surviving in Venus's environment. These spacecraft ended up having a lot more in common with deep sea submarines, but by the end of the program, the Soviets successfully landed five spacecraft on the surface of Venus. Much of what we now know about the surface conditions are because of those missions. Each spacecraft was able to transmit data for about 30 minutes before they overheated. Here are some of those photos that the Venera landers captured. Pretty cool. Okay, so we've sent robots, but could a human ever visit Venus? Yes, but maybe not in the way you expect. Humans would not be landing on the surface of Venus because... But there are other safer ways that humans could visit Venus, ones where we never land on the surface at all. In fact, many planetary scientists at NASA think that before humans travel to Mars, we should set our eyes on Venus first. Take a look at the distance between Earth and Venus and Earth and Mars. Earth is way closer to Venus than it is to Mars, so traveling there and back could be considerably faster, safer, shorter, and cheaper than going to Mars. Many at NASA would actually like for humans to visit Venus first. It's an exploration strategy called Moon to Venus to Mars, and the idea is to work our way up in difficulty. It's like running a half marathon before you try a full one. Manned missions to Venus would not only give us a ton of science, but we'd learn a lot about interplanetary travel. So how would we do it? Well, not by landing on the surface, but by exploring it from above. In this kind of mission, astronauts would actually leave Earth and travel into Venusian space, not even necessarily in orbit, and stay there for several months while they controlled robotic planes and drones and balloons and rovers that they would deploy onto Venus below. The advantage is that astronauts would have almost real-time control of those robots, with the flexibility to choose where and how they explore. This is the kind of mission that could be done relatively simply. After a few months around Venus, the astronauts would then return back to Earth. There's so many versions of how this kind of mission could go, and it requires shockingly little fuel, such as with the Venus backflip maneuver, where astronauts would stay within one light minute of Venus for months without ever needing to perform an orbital insertion burn. Planetary scientist Dr. Kirby made an excellent video explaining this exact kind of maneuver. It's really cool. There's a link to it in the description. Sending humans to Venus has been in discussion in America for over 50 years. In 1967, two years before we landed on the moon, NASA propulsion engineer Edward Willis wrote that a Venus mission can be accomplished using Apollo level technology. And he argued for its inclusion as a part of the Apollo applications program, which would eventually lead to Skylab. Venus was recognized as by far the easiest first planet for humans to explore. It would be a great way to practice and test how humans fare in planetary exploration before we take on a Mars mission, which would have to be much longer, much more expensive, and much more complicated. Even now, there is a significant movement within the space community to make Venus our next stop after the moon. But what if humans wanted to get a little closer to Venus? Is there any way that we could do that? Actually, yes. In 2015, NASA designed a concept for a mission called Havoc, which wouldn't land humans on Venus, but would actually float 50 to 60 kilometers above the ground. Humans would live and work in giant airships, which would hover high above the clouds. At this altitude, the air pressure, the temperature, and the gravity are much closer to what we experience here on Earth. In fact, if they kept it at the right height, it would actually be room temperature outside. Interestingly, the balloons could just be filled with breathable air because it's so much more buoyant than carbon dioxide. When the astronauts completed the mission in the cloud ships, they would launch into a smaller rocket and rendezvous with the return spacecraft to Earth. It's a more complicated mission than just a flyby, but it is still more feasible than landing on the surface. So that's Venus. It's a dynamic, superheated volcanic world covered in rocks, mountains, canyons, and craters, and shrouded by thick, acidic clouds. Truly Earth's angsty twin, and hopefully a place that humans will explore very soon.